Hi, I'm Dean. Along with my wife, Jan, we're going shopping for an RV today. A Class A used RV. And we'd like to take you along on the journey. We're going north of Denver on I-25 to a little place called Johnstown, which ironically has several large RV dealerships within miles of each other. In fact, we'll be visiting RV America, which among other things claims to have the largest indoor showroom in the RV industry. And they also have a humongous outside lot. Very nice people in terms of allowing you the time that you need to look at the RVs and to examine the features. So we're going to take the next step from the online shopping that we've been doing for the last 18 months or so. In fact, we jokingly say we probably looked at 10,000 Class A RVs. And uh, we know that might not be true, but it certainly seems like it. But in the process of that, we've identified three or four manufacturers that we really feel like offer the kind of product that we'd be proud to own and would be happy to live in and work in full time on the road. So this is the next step to sit in the coach, to feel the coach, to understand the layout, to see if the storage space underneath is really what we think it is and then to kind of draw some conclusions at the end of it. We're going to share this video with you. We know that your preferences are not those that we particularly have, but maybe this process will benefit you a little bit as you look for your next RV, or as in our case, your first RV. So come on, join us. Let's go shopping for an RV. We're looking at a Diplomat by Monaco. It's a 2007. The main reason we chose the uh, RV Class A as opposed to trailers, etc. Storage. We need lots of storage. And if you look down here, most of these bins are storage or access to all of your water and all of that kind of thing. But we have a lot of basement storage. So you don't see that in the trailers and you don't see it in the fifth wheelers. On our way into the Monaco, you'll notice on the left side of the door here is a power switch for the ceiling light, the porch light, entry steps, a door awning, a patio awning, the storage light, and the battery cutoff. It's real important to have those, in our minds, at the ready from the front of the coach without having to go into some master control panel and uh, take care of it from there after you've walked through the dark. The other thing that I like is the fire extinguisher right down here by the seat. So you could go in with it, armed with it, or you could grab it on your way out uh, if there was a different kind of fire on the outside of the coach. Another feature may or may not have been added is the 12 volt, the phone, and the 110 volt outlet. We've looked at a lot of kitchens and tried to decide if there was enough room inside or whether we could put an island in or they were equipped with something like this. It happens that we're finding these are very stable as opposed to just the shelf that comes out which feels like you can't put a lot of weight on them. The other thing we're looking at from an interior standpoint is how much light will it take to light the place up at night. We have lived in homes that had dark wood and it seemed to suck up a lot of light. So we're looking at things that are a lot lighter. Now the other thing we're looking at is what color is the wood versus what we've seen in the pictures online because it seems like the color of the wood changes based on how much light is coming in from the front of the coach or from the side windows of the coach. Uh, or if all of the grapes have been pulled, the shades have been pulled down, and you find yourself looking at the lights from overhead, what color is the wood? One of the things I really love about a lot of these kitchens is the, the touches, the decorative touches. It makes it feel like it's really a home and not just a trailer or, you know, a camper. Um, things like this. You can line up all your spices here for ease of cooking. It's got a wonderful convection oven. Most of them do. Um, I haven't used one, so I'm not sure how well it works as far as baking in them. I'd really like some of our viewers to comment on that, if they would, please. 
I'm still trying to decide if I really need an oven or not. My husband is voting for a dishwasher, but since I'm the main dishwasher, I would rather have an oven, so that's my vote. So that's something we still haven't resolved. Again, we'd love to hear from you guys. Tell us, yay or nay. When it comes to bathrooms, you've got a half bath or you have the full bath. This one, rather than a half bath, has a more private bath and an entrance from the master suite as well. Two entrances can definitely benefit. It gives you the privacy that you may need if other people are staying with you in your coach. Or if the grandbabies are here, you won't disturb them. The other thing that seems important in the bathroom is some storage space. Another thing you need to keep in mind in these shower stalls is the placement of the faucets and the shower fixtures. If there is a seat here that's big enough to accommodate you, you're going to be whacking your back on this all the time. And I don't know why they didn't think of that. Some people can't decide whether it's good to have the washer or the dryer. Some people use it. Some people don't use it. I want to have the option. I want one installed so if we need it while we're boondocking, we can use it. Otherwise, we decide to use the laundry facilities at the uh, RV resort or campground. We can do that, too. We've taken a look at a lot of bedroom layout. And what we like is either a major window behind the bed or windows on both sides that would provide a cross breeze when you're camping. Now a real plus for me is all of this storage in the hallway. A lot of them don't have that. And look at how handy these little baskets are. You can pull them out so you can actually see what you're doing instead of rummaging around in that black hole. And there's another one here too. You can use it for various things. Looks like it's set up to be a coat closet, but I don't know as we'll need coats because we don't plan on spending a lot of time in cold weather. So we could easily turn this into a pantry or some kind of other storage. And it'd be great. So we have some options here. There's a lot of storage in this in this coach. I think it's shooting to the top for us as far as our decision goes. The other thing that concerns me is always egress. How would you get out of a coach that was burning? I know that's not something that we like to think about. Maybe you don't either. But burying our head in the sand and not planning to have a window big enough to go through is also not a good idea. One of the things that's a real big deal for me is the cockpit because I plan to spend a lot of time here. I like to have the monitor right here for the backup camera and for the GPS. And I like to have it far enough away so that using my bifocals in my sunglasses will give me a pleasant view. Nice to have the radio over there, uh, but what's more important to me is can I see the basic gauges and the idiot lights which are hiding behind the steering wheel on this. Now with the seat back further I'm sure I can tilt the wheel back. But I also want to see what is the purview up here. This happens to be a single piece windshield. Much more expensive to replace. Uh, however, I'm also looking at the pillars on the left and right side. Is that going to obstruct the mirrors? It's not going to in this particular coach. They are pretty big. I don't know if I like that, but I don't get a sense of claustrophobia that I do in some coaches. I also like the feature steering wheel. I like to have some controls up here so I don't have to reach out for everything, including what's going on on the side console. I like a drink holder over here, not over on the left side, where if I happen to spill it, it's going into all the switches and the controls for the transmission and everything else. Uh, the armrests are where I need them to be height-wise you want to check that out too. The seat needs to be comfortable, the steering wheel needs to telescope, it needs to tilt, and it's nice if the pedals can change as well. How comfy are the seats, Dee? The seats in this one are very, very comfortable. Another feature that we examine when we look at a coach is the storage up above. Sometimes it will go down one slide, but not the other. And what we see in this coach is above storage all the way around. Way back in the bedroom you can see the washer dryer. Uh, incidentally that's where you typically change uh, 
clothing back there, so it's a great place to have that. This coach, while it has the nice big bathroom and private bathroom on the left side with two uh, entrances to that, does not waste a lot of space in a hallway. And you want to take a look at that. Efficient use of space is something that we know is going to be important to us. Like the kitchen layout, love this piece that actually pulls out but will go back in when you're traveling when the slides are in. Jan and I have mentioned the fact that we'll both be working while we're on board the coach. So one of the questions that she has always had is what am I going to use for a workspace when we're going down the road? This one has a feature that's not unique entirely to uh, the Monaco coach line but it has a pull-out desk surface. This is great. This would be really comfortable for me. I could push my passenger seat up close enough and when the step cover is in place, this could be my workspace. Do you like several uh, screens to work on? I'm happy with just a laptop, so I don't need the room he does. So this would be just perfect for me anytime. I've been concerned as we've gone along about the size of the side window of the passenger seat. While the windows on the driver's seat are typically larger, and we understand why, and because they're unobstructed with a door, I don't want my wife, the co-pilot, to be looking through a porthole uh, to see the outside because we plan to enjoy the scenery. Well, that's it for this trip. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we've enjoyed having you along. We hope as a result of this video that you'll subscribe to our channel and visit our blog at rvwranglers.com. We'll share stories, articles, reviews, polls, and just some perspectives on the kind of things that we're running into as we try to make this transition from sticks and bricks to full-time RV living. We hope you'll stay with us. We look forward to seeing you on the next video.